Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about an upcoming tropical cyclone as well as some other things about the tropics. It's been a long time since we've had to talk about the tropics, but they are back and it looks like we're going to have some new systems to talk about. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what do you think is going to happen with this tropical cyclone we're talking about? How strong is it going to get? Where is it going to hit, if anywhere? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, we have a 50% chance of development there. Uh, offshore of Central America. There is that chance that it's going to go between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. That's a very deadly place for a storm to go through because after that it reaches very favorable conditions. We're going to want to watch this one very closely as it poses a pretty moderate threat to, you know, areas in the Gulf Coast of the United States, also regions of Mexico as well at a pretty uh, large risk as well, south of Texas. Anywhere in the Gulf basically is on limits as far as being impacted by this one, so we're going to want to watch it extremely closely. All right, now here's a depiction of the area that we're going to start to see things start to develop here. As you can see, there's not a lot of clouds in the area right now that I have circled out in red, but we are going to see something develop there uh, within the coming days. You can see clouds to the east of there. They're likely going to move into this red region where they're going to have an easy time developing, potentially, again, like I said, moving in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba, eventually possibly into the Gulf as well. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to talk a little bit about the negative factors moving forward for this one, the potential things that are going to hold it back from development. And then we're going to get right into our European ensemble model, take a look at how strong this one has it getting, as well as where it has it going. And then we're going to take a look at our GFS ensemble and compare. All right, now here is that shear map. And as you can see, actually the area where we first see this one potentially developing, we have favorable conditions in those green shades. But near the Gulf Coast, thankfully, we actually have unfavorable conditions for now. Very, very high shear in there. That's mostly due to uh, the cold front coming through. We're going to really need to watch and see if that shear sticks around or if we're going to see more favorable conditions uh, up you know, begin for these regions. If we do see favorable conditions for the Gulf lookout, because that's a very bad thing when we have a storm potentially moving into the same area. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to take a look here at our European ensemble model. And this is what we call our low pressure location. Uh, and each low pressure center isn't, you know, what the ensemble of all of them is showing, but actually we're seeing each individual ensemble models, um, depiction here. So we can see that by time we're looking at hours 84 from the point I'm making this video. So about the morning hours on Friday, October 2nd, you can see two of our ensemble members actually have low pressure developing there south of Cuba. Uh, and by time we reach potentially the afternoon hours of Saturday, October 3rd, we actually have maybe five members on board here, multiple different regions. They're very spread out with, with where they have this one beginning. Uh, but nevertheless, we do have models showing this one as a potential storm that will be developing. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our European ensemble models probability map. And then we're going to move on to the GFS ensemble model, which has a much, much uh, worse outlook on what's coming with this one. So first off, here's our ensemble models probability of development here on our European ensemble model. And as you can see, uh, it does, and this is for tropical depression percentage, there isn't, there's like under 10% development chance for tropical storm or hurricane on this model for this one right now. We usually see this one really ease into the po probability of system. So uh, this isn't to say there is 0% chance that this one ever becomes a tropical storm or hurricane. I don't want you to think that because there certainly is if it moves into the favorable Gulf waters. But for now, the model isn't really picking up on that as a likelihood. Uh, but we're going to want to really watch it as we move forward, which obviously we will here on the channel. For now, we have that yellow shade in the middle of that circle, which indicates a 50 to 60% chance of tropical depression development, according to the European ensemble model. So this is the, the average of all of the members saying, yes, it's a pretty 50-50 chance if we see a tropical depression at this point, uh, which is quite high odds when you look at that many members. Uh, so that's why probably why the National Hurricane Center has gone with a 50% chance of development. I think that's a very good call at this point. I certainly agree with that. 
Uh, now, what we're going to do here is we're going to just move on and we're going to take a look at that GFS ensemble model, uh, the same map we take we took a look at with the European ensemble model, so the low-pressure location map and how strong they will be. Uh, and let me just tell you, it, it, it thinks this storm is going to get a lot worse and it thinks that it could impact the United States. All right, now here we are taking a look at that GFS ensemble model, and I've seen a lot of other uh, weather enthusiasts and meteorologists call showing this this model here because it's very very uh, dire outlook as you can see uh, already by October 1st Thursday afternoon that's coming up very very shortly we already see uh, 1005 1004 1003 millibar low pressure center developing there offshore of Central America so this one has it developing much earlier on already getting its act together and then by the time we're already at Friday morning, October 2nd, I see a lot of 998, 996, 999. That's probably a tropical depression already uh, quite easily. Probably also could be, you know, moving towards tropical storm status. It's really hard to say with pressure because it can be very misleading, but I'm just trying to um, gauge what this model is indicating here. Uh, so already just way ahead of what the European model has. And another thing that would be very huge uh, in the forecast is if the European model starts to agree with the GFS model more. That would be significant because once you have those two major models on board, it's obviously the certainty goes way higher when you have that agreement there. All right. So uh, stronger storm than the European model for now. We'll have to see what the European model is showing over the coming days. It's going to be a huge, huge development in what this storm's future looks like. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to move on and we're going to move on towards later on Saturday. We're just going to watch this one develop towards Sunday, and then eventually become a United States threat. We're going to take a look at a few other maps, even take a look at what the uh, Canadian ensemble model is showing, and then we're going to close out the video. All right, now by time we're taking a look at Saturday, maybe at about 2 p.m., you can see that a few of them, actually I would say about half of them, show this one hitting the Yucatan Peninsula, which believe it or not, would be the best case scenario because it would hit as maybe a 1,000 millibar low pressure center and that would really dramatically decrease the probability of it ever developing after that point. Whereas if we see it, again, that, that sweet spot where it goes in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba is really what you don't want to see because then it doesn't get that land interaction that really breaks it up. It stays over water and you can even see actually uh, we see the storms that are near the Yucatan Peninsula are all, all over a thousand there. And then we can see the ones that are in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. They're at 994, 992, 987, 980 I even see south of Cuba. So much stronger storm if it goes in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. This model is even showing that. All right. Now we start to move on towards where the certainty is getting lower. So take it with a grain of salt from this point on. We're taking a look at Sunday afternoon and you can see that the models really start to spread out where they think the low pressure will be. Uh, we see some members showing it way closer to uh, Mexico. We see some even showing it hit Florida by this point as a 973 millibar uh, potential tropical storm or hurricane by that point. We see 980s well uh, into the Gulf of Mexico, likely heading towards Florida. So there's many, many options on the table, and I don't really think anywhere in the Gulf is safe. We have multiple members here uh, showing, you know, these, these tracks that are very concerning looking. We see others showing more of a weaker track to the further south regions like Mexico, which would not be as impactful as, again, that Yucatan Peninsula Cuba track. So... We're really going to want to watch this closely. Usually, as just a tip here, you can see that the models really spread out with what they're showing. Even members within an ensemble model here is what we're actually specifically taking a look at. Uh, this is when you can tell the model certainty is really lowered. Uh, and then uh, we see another one. This is October 7th, and we see a whole separate system come through. So this model really doesn't want to back down. It's saying we're going to have multiple tropical cyclones possibly entering the Gulf in a similar track. Uh, and here's a map that'll kind of show you guys a little bit more. I think if you didn't understand the previous map we were using, this one shows uh, the minimum pressure on the ensemble model. So the lowest pressure any of the members were showing. And as you can see, uh, by October 4th, we had one member showing a hurricane hit the west coast of Florida there near Tampa Bay. Uh, obviously, really not what you want to see. A very impactful situation. So I guess this is a good example of worst case scenario, what this system could potentially be. Obviously, I don't want you to think I really feel like this is going to happen, uh, but definitely shows you the potential that this system has. Uh, we're going to want to watch it closely. And here's a second system way later on. Obviously, confidence is extremely low with this, uh, but we have members showing separate hurricanes developing. Uh, we see one show one there in the middle of the Atlantic, one hitting the 
uh, panhandle of Florida there. Also one in between Cuba and the, the Yucatan Peninsula. So tropics are going to start really waking up soon. Uh, we're going to want to watch that extremely closely. Here's by the 11th, we see more members showing more tropical systems. So I think that first half of October is when we're going to see it wake up again. Here is our Canadian ensemble model, and it also shows the tropics waking up here. As you can see, this is by October 5th. The Canadian ensemble model also has multiple systems. Uh, basically on this map, you don't want to treat it as if there would be, there's not actually going to be four separate systems at this point. It's just each member is showing it at a different location, but likely there would only be one system, one of these, uh, if any. So I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little bit more confusing once you dive into the ensembles and the separate members all on one map. But basically, uh, this is all just different opinions. Look at it as different models. It's almost like the spaghetti models, taking a look at just different tracks, not really separate storms. It's all the same storm, separate tracks, separate intensity, all on one map. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you think October is going to go? Do you think it'll be a lot like, uh, like September? Do you think it's going to be warmer, colder? What do you think? Dale Allen said, Cincinnati, Ohio, and October will follow September for being colder. Uh, and I really think for Cincinnati, Ohio, that could be the case, especially earlier in the month. Our October forecast was yesterday, if you want to check that out, by the way, if you haven't seen it already. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Birds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, Cindy Klein, and our new diamond patron, Larry LaPan. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. You can correct me if I'm saying it wrong, but welcome to the diamond patron club, I guess you could call it. And then we have our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Always stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for official guidance on what to do with these dangerous, dangerous hurricanes and other storms. Anyway, don't forget to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.